Welcome back, all my beautiful, sexy baller nerds and nerds. That's starting over here at the top right side of the map in game number two for University of Washington in the red trunks. It is Solgood and his opponent from the deep bottoms of depths of hell of Bronze League. It is the Blue Terran representing New York University. It is Tyrant. <laughs> With me is Shiro. Oh man, is this uh, is this actually happening, man? Is this actually <laughs> happening? Oh, uh, I'm sure he's. I'm sure he win. Terran's in balance anyway, right? Terran's in balance. Well, you you know what? It might not be completely accurate. It might be like just like a playing account or like a separate account that he might use. Maybe he put, but, maybe he's GM or Korea. I don't know. But that but that loading screen got to me, man. You you just see that you were like, wait, is that bronze? Like. Like that's the, I'm like is that I, I've got that like Philip J Fry meme face. I'm like can't tell if that's like grand like some special grandmaster if that's bronze league or what the heck that's going on. I'm like uh, so it's we'll see. But hey, it's grandma. Fifteen years of grandmaster. That's what it is. I know, right? Well, hey, I mean, hey, he had his 10 supply, he had his 12 barracks, so we'll see what he can do from there on out. Uh, if you guys are just tuning in, again, welcome into the Collegiate Star League. You guys can find us in Raid Call Channel ID 1111. That is four ones. We're hanging out in there, hang, um, so come on in there. I'm going to be able to maybe give you a CSL badge, as far as we know. At least I'm not going to be able to. So we'll see if our people that are currently in there in production and everything else are going to be able to have that capability. But we have a TVZ on our hands on Star Station, game number one, of course went to caliber for Washington. What do you think the odds are for our Terran player to bring this back for NYU? I actually think he has a chance. Because, like, let's be honest, he's actually been hitting a lot of his timings pretty well. Pretty spot on. So, at this stage, there was a pretty aggressive expansion, so maybe if he goes for early pressure, he's got some good opportunities. The Zerg may underestimate him and just think, hey, he's bronze or whatever, when he's actually probably something on some other server. Yeah, it's definitely it definitely could be possible again. You, with Hots, it was something we talked about. I think was it last week or the week before that we were talking about how just there's still a lot of inaccuracies on the ladder ranking where you know, still some people could. I mean, it goes both ways where some people could be either too high because they played so early, some people might be too low rank because they played too late or haven't played enough yet or playing on a different server, and that's a big part too. With the global play, a lot of players can decide which server they play on now, especially if they were used to just having one account that they solidly played on. That's a uh, I think that's pretty big to note. But look at this, man. It's all good. Believe in yourself. Three hats. Wow, triple expansion. That's pretty greedy. That's a that's quick. I mean, that, again, th it was, this was. Uh, he still got the pool before he put the hatch down, but this was about as close to. Uh, this is about the fastest three hatch you could get with having a pool down. So, not too bad by Saul Good. Um, if again, Tyrant doesn't know how to punish his or isn't planning to punish his, if he's just planning to play macro, Ooh, it might not okay. turn out too well. Is that actually in range, though? I don't yes, know. Yes, uh, I think it should be. Might be. At least with the position it is, it might be. I don't think right now at the moment Saga does see this. No, he does not. He doesn't have an Overlord flying over there. There's two, wow. three Marines heading on over, so. This is not bad. Ooh, and he's also taking the third see. Yep. Do they spot it? I'm just trying to see. Vision. Yeah, he does pick up on it. Oh, and will the bunker finish before uh, the SCP goes down? No! No! Uh, he should have probably pulled an SCV with these three Marines. Yeah, it would have been really good. And now with the bunker, this aggression is completely thwarted. He's going to be able to just completely confidently get his three base up and saturate it at his pace. Now, Tyron isn't exactly in the most uh, most of troubles in this world. He does have the third CC down, and again, seeing that third CC with such a good timing, I'm definitely going to say he's probably not bronzy, even though that would be hilarious to think that. Um, he's getting really nice timings. He's going to be able to get his own economy up, get that triple orbital command as well. He will have to be careful, though, what exactly Saga does uh, plan to play. Will he try to go into mutas? Will he try to go into kind of a little bit of a roach timing here? Because that's Something we've seen a lot of Zergs utilize some of these really quick little roach timings to try to put, break through the Terran before they get kind of the quote unquote broken and imbalanced compositions. Of course, I'm 
Tyron putting down a couple of engineers. Ooh, double engineering bay. Yep, he's going to be getting double upgrades, so it's basically confirmed that he's going to go into bio after this. I'm still not seeing the extra barracks. And that's, again, one of those things that I worry about, especially if Terran player gets a little bit too greedy, just completely focuses on tech, completely focuses on getting buildings up, just focusing on his economy. He doesn't actually get units out in actual um, structures that can produce attacking units. He might be in a little bit of trouble if Saga notices that and goes for some sort of timing with it. And it, but at the moment, I mean, all is peaceful in this battleground. Yeah. Pumping out two Hellions, so may wait for till four just to deny some of that creep spread, <coughs> not to mention the fact that he might try and get a run by, but on a three base with Queens now, I think it's really difficult to make it achievable compared to what it used to be. Yeah, it is a little bit tough indeed. Now, New York University, they are known as the Bobcats. They're a big private school, 38K undergrad plus postgrad located in New York City. Um, they're actually a pretty big esports school, just overall from what I know. They have a game center where, I mean, not only do they offer some certain classes, again, more kind of towards game design, but they actually host some of the esports events over there. I know recently in the past fall, Fallcraft and uh, NYU and CSL hosted a Fallcraft over there. But, I mean, um, just kind of in recent times in this qualifier, they went 3-0 against Santa Rosa Junior College, which, of course, one of our staff members, Ian, Mr. Ursa Major, lost to them, unfortunately. They went 3-1 over Boston University. They went 3-0 over UCLA. That's kind of a little bit of a surprise. Um, last season, they lost in the round of 64, and in the last qualifier, they lost in the round of 32 to Massachusetts Amherst. I've seen a lot of Massachusetts like Amherst, man. They're upsetting everybody. Zerg melee attacking ground, doing quite well actually. Going for very quick upgrades with the Zerg. That's good, I mean, for a variety of reasons. Obviously, dealing with those Hellion harassment is going to be one of the key ones. But looks like he should be able to get us around here as he's going to the top of the tunnel, using a nice bit of a bait by the Queens. Guess almost going to get us around. Yes, gets the surround and all of them should be able to clean that up pretty quickly. Should do manage to escape. Well, this is actually really fortunate for uh, Saga because he is investing right now into one one care one one melee one carapace. He's investing into Ling's at the moment, so most likely going to go into Ling Bay and Muta. And in this regards, if Tyrant was going to go into Mech, this could be a little bit of a problem for him because he would be able to he, his units would become very dis dispensable very fast. Um, but because he is going to be, yeah, but because Tyrant is going to go into Bio, they're going to be that much more effective. So, but this is not what you should be doing running into the choke right next to Hellions by a bunch of supplies. Supply depots don't do that. Ah. But overall, you, you're just looking at seeing Saga showing really, really good macro at the moment. He's grabbing a fourth hatch at, at the moment. Uh, he, he's got a decent creep spread. He's tacking up. He's getting a spire. What else is he doing? Not too much. <laughs> Not too much more. Not too much more. Yeah. I mean, at this moment, Tyrants, he's a, a little bit light on the number of units he has, but a lot of those are the fact that he just doesn't have that many Marines out. I'm just checking up their SCVs to work. Yeah, he's 20 workers behind as Sawgood. Skip that magical 70 drones, which is usually, I think that's the ideal amount of Zerg um, drones that you want for as a Zerg player. Yeah, so, I'm not sure exactly in Hots what that uh, number is, would be, but I think it would be something similar to Wings of Liberty. It used to be 73, again. wasn't it? Yeah, something like seven, anywhere from 73 to 80. I mean, you could always utilize the drones for spine crawlers, spore crawlers, if you want a little yeah, bit exactly. over. So, I mean, no harm, no foul. But at this point, what we're watching right now from Sawgod is basically what we always used to see in Wings of Liberty, where it was Ling Bane Muta, where the 2 2 timing might come up here really soon. And he'll just wait for him as he takes his third base kind of patiently. Then he'll try to jump on him, and he's already going for an infestation pit as well, which you could, of course, utilize for either swarm hosts or infestors. I don't know, this is just really fun to watch. Like, when a good player such as Saga just kind of gets into a routine where he's just kind of in the motions, he's already just getting everything down. This might not be the exact answer to run to a choke again with Lynx against Hellions, but. Uh, uh, he traded pretty efficiently outside. I mean, like, he did get a lot of Lynx for what was a pretty small number of. Hellions. I mean, what, four Hellions for all those links? Mm. Not a bad trade. But I mean, I guess he loses the production time that it took him to build those. Yeah. Well, so I'm surprised he's going for Hellbats, to be honest. As opposed yeah, to uh, that definitely could help out. Well, typically with Hellbats, I guess you could utilize them from drops. Typically, we would see it a little bit more often with a kind of a composition of mech. And again, they're not exactly the most mobile units either. They'll be able to soak up some of the damage. I, I know a lot of Terrans I talk to, they actually prefer going Bio Widow Mine versus uh, Bio Hellbat like that because sometimes you can just lose the Hellbats a little bit too soon depending on the composition, especially if they get roaches out, the Hellbats actually don't work out too, too well at times. So, 
But Tyrant slowly catching up in the supply count, but Saga does have his fourth hatch, he does have the macro hatch by his third up as well. Hive is just about to finish up, getting 26 additional lings out, and 2-2 is almost uh, finishing up as well. Now, what I worry about three, right three now... almost complete with Tyrant. Well, on his way with Tyrant. Yeah, on his way. Well. Um, what I'm worried about right now for Saga, because he's been sort of trading against Widowmines, Hel Hellions, sort of here and there, he might have wasted a little bit, a few too many links. He needs to make sure he can get a good number of those to be able to form a lot of banelings and get a good Muta pack out as well before he actually uh, makes anything happen as we watch the drop happening in the main. Face out, but at least one queen should be able to get this macro house taken out as well. Just a really nice position actually against the hive, preventing him from getting a full surround. Does eventually get cleaned up after Burn is forcing him to pick up. Drops off yet again inside the main, actually. Yeah, and getting already three additional, maybe even four here in a little bit. Nope, looks like about three more additional drone kills. So, this is actually a really nice play by Tyrant. Did a little bit of harassment, didn't lose too many of his own units, and sort of kind of hacked away at the economy. Of the way, That's going to be a scary thing. Indeed, indeed it is, and of course for some of you guys that are not aware with the new meters, they do have regeneration and they do even fly a little bit quicker as well, so um, a little bit more of a incentive, I guess if you want to call it, to go into mutas and especially utilize that Ling Bane style. <coughs> now with the 2-2 finished up, I would probably, w I, w I would hope and look for uh, Saga to look, go for an attack right now before anything else happens. Because once the 3-3 three, three finish up, finishes up for Tyrant, I think it might be a little bit tougher for uh, Saga to engage into him. Yeah, I mean, Tyrant's not necessarily in a bad position. The only thing he's obviously going to worry about is that hypermobility of those munis. Now that they are slightly faster, he might have his base get caught out, so he probably wants to look at building quite a few missile turrets all over the place. Maybe even some incendiary turrets, but for the most part, he has enough marines to deal with these mutilists, assuming he can get rid of those pesky links. But Bailing's being morphed in, should he have to pick up most of them? Well, here That's we go, some of the Widow Mines are bearing, up. and. You know, all the bailings are gone, some of the marines are coming through, and you know, stim marines versus mutas typically goes in the favor of the marines, but looks like just way too much muscle at the moment for Sawgood. His one attack also finished up for the mutas as well, that's actually pretty big in that uh, regards of an engagement. Ow, my cat just tried to jump up on me, man. Ow. Oh, have you ever had that happen? Like, a cat tries to jump on you, but like, doesn't get a good balance on you? It just like starts, claw it's like sliding and clawing <laughs> your whole entire leg on the way down. Oh. You should lose some weight, you cat. Alright, um, but <laughs> anyway. Surrounding. They get this around the full army, but it's, yeah, I mean, it's going to turn out work well for them because Hellion's not necessarily best at doing circular damage. Forces out. The rest of the mutas, the mutas. How many muta numbers is he on? What, 16? Yeah, it looks eight, like about eight, that 16 and 20. So, 19. Well, he's transitioning right now into Ultralisk, and of course, we know Ultralisks are a lot stronger and harder of the swarm. They do the same amount of damage as they do against uh, light units like Marines, and he's just basically going to time this out really well, where his 3-3 finishes up, his Chitty is plating as well, so he's going to have that 5-3 on those Ultras, and that, I mean, everybody knows, I mean, it's almost no difference in regards to Bio. With Widow Mines, maybe the being the only serious factor in that regard, but the Ultras just are going to be able to swarm, do a lot of damage. Lings as well, surface area so a couple lot for them as well, and with the combination of mutas, he's going to be able to take out the Marines just that much more quicker if he saves everything properly. I like this, man. This is good. This is good. This is a good Zerg strider. Not a typical fan of Zerg, but it's pretty good. I, I mean, I, I really like the fact that he's transitioning to Ultra looks. I think a lot of people just try and stick with the aerial combination for a little bit too long, and Ultralisks aren't too bad. I mean, assuming you can get a nice surround, which he's currently being able to do, and this type of map, this massive circular area allows you to get speed links in behind very quickly. Not to mention the fact that you can sub add Ultralisks to help out that happening. A lot of Overseers happening as well. Oh my god, what in the heck? Oh, you just watch up so hard. Whoa. That's definitely not good. A lot of those dropped into red and orange health. Um, he was trying to form a lot of bailings, and I do like this as Tyrant is trying to press on forward, splitting some of his units up. But a good job at least drawing some of the stim out at the moment. He's going to have to stim really soon again to be able to get out of the way, and there it happens. Ultralisk rolling on through, bailings coming right behind them, and I think right now at the moment Saga is going to be able to break through his whole entire army with minimal losses. And just again, just remax and 50 additional links, another ultra, and press on forward. I think I'm worried about if he's not going to be able to defend this fourth base over here, Tyrant might be in a position where he's going to end up in economic check, man, as we're watching right now. Yeah, you know, I got really, to be careful I think though. He should probably go for the third as opposed to going for the fourth. So he, uh, 
might be able to make it through just trying to get this army. They're stimming back and this is why you need Ultralist Charge, which no longer exists. <laughs> um, in fact, what? <laughs> you're, you're, an evil you're an evil sadistic man saying something like that. <laughs> Ultralist <laughs> speed charge ability, uh-huh. Okay. They do. Faru charge. Oh my god. Well, okay. I'm watching right now how Saga is playing. He does have to be careful. Even though the Terran is down about 70 supply, you don't want to throw away too, too many high gas intensive units because you're not going to be able to reproduce them if you're not careful. There is still no fifth hatch at the moment for Saga out on the map, which he probably should make that a focal point of his game to take another hatchery and keep his economy going. But still, with a big lead, he does have, he look as he's doing right now, he is just going to swarm around everything. Thor gets lifted up in the air. <laughs> Thor, Thor evacuation. And Salgan might be just have enough to break, uh, push on through here. Well, yeah, I mean, he hasn't really got much incentive to stay back. He's already maxed his supply, so he just needs to put the pressure on. Third base is pretty close to mine out, and we can see Tyrant obviously trying to get as many minerals out of there as quickly as possible using all his mules on that patch, as opposed to that. So I think he wants to transition this base out of it and move it over to. Oh, I thought it's Orionidas for a second. <laughs> that base over to the fourth. The Hydralis Cavern looks like a Nidus man. All right. Well, here we go. They're rolling on in here. Saga's swarming. There's not really a lot of Terran forces. The supply depots do kind of help out, choke out some of the Zerg units. Tyrant doing as best he possibly can, lifting on up in the high ground, trying to take out some of the Ultras on the low ground as well. But as we see, the economy's completely been taken out. All those supply depots out in the front, supply block Tyrant. And he's sort of stuck at the moment at 108 supply until he could uh, get more some more supply depots. But look at his economy, man. He just can't spend right now a lot, unfortunately. Yeah. This is usually the point of the game where the way to hold back that Zerg army is with things like defensive planetary fortresses and potentially counter drops everywhere, but you just can't do it at this stage with that big, heavy ultralist army breathing down your neck. Yeah, it's unfortunate too because Star Station is just such a big map with a lot of airspace. He would have a lot of area where he could drop in, pop out, hop in back in, and just do that whole routine. But at the moment, as we're seeing, he's just trying to engage heads up as best as he possibly could. Tyrant, of course, micring his heart. So out. many ultralists. Oh, oh my gosh. It's just too much muscle, so man. Too much muscle. Eight ultras. Thor on the low ground gets taken out. Tyrant is still and marker. Then, well, five down. armor as well. Five armor, three attack ultras. They yeah. don't die. Ling's, of course, doing a good job of supporting and soaking up a lot of damage, but some of these Ultras are kind of getting away from the main part of the army, even though it's completely taken out the economy. We're going to watch some of these Ultras die in their process. I just don't think right now Tyrant has any possible way of coming back as we're seeing the rest of the units stream down over down to the fourth. As the rest of the economy is being cleared out, we're probably going to see a GG here soon from Tyrant. Yeah, I mean, at this stage, I don't know what he can do to come back. Like, there's just so many Ultras everywhere, he's currently pretty much got one base he's mining from. Just needs to make I guess mass mines. Just needs to make mass, mass mines. mines. He doesn't have the money to make mass mines. I know, right? All I guess he's got the gas. He's got a lot of gas baked up. Maybe this is the time where he transitions to Mass Reaper. <laughs> oh. <laughs> mass Reaper <laughs> actually, I actually, actually like, sat there for a second trying to think. I'm like, how would that work? I'm like, you know what? I wonder if it could work. But I'm like, oh, wait, no, this is harder to swarm. Like, like there was actually a couple times in Wings of Liberty where I would actually I, maybe misclick or sometimes build like maybe a small Reaper pack and drop them in just to take and kind of shell out some of the big structures out of the way. But yeah, no, like with these Reapers, they're just too light. Like, the Ultras would be like, stop tickling us. Stop it. Ah, uh, I really wanted to build a Viper. The D5 would be pretty amazing. Oh yeah, having a having a viper out right now. I mean, having a viper originally, I would even be just that much bigger. Again, we have we see no blinding clouds, no yanks or anything like that. So, exactly. uh, four medevac drop coming over to the fifth base of Sawgood, but he's already very well aware of that. Trying to split up the drops at the moment, but you know it's only going to be so successful. There's already a lot of links in place. There's some units as well trying to catch uh, some of the drops as they're happening. Tyrant's doing a good job of keeping himself in the game, but again, when we look at this just like earlier today, there's just some deficits that you can't come back from that TVP we casted earlier. Just way too much Zerg right now at the moment. No matter how much balance, how much imbalance at this point, it, with 81 supply yeah. to 200, it's just not going to happen. A constant 200 supply just really. I mean, he's, he's not engaging the base, the fourth base, just because he's like, well. In the incident, the tyrant somehow has an army saved up, or somehow re mass repairs the planetary fortress. He will wipe out a massive chunk of the Zerg army. 
but we are seeing the muscle augments coming through now for the hydralis as he's starting to transition towards that muscular augmentation <laughs> Muscular you know, we, haven't, we haven't seen any swarm hosts as well. That's kind of an interesting thing. Whoa, I, he just went mass bane. Whoa. Indeed. And I, and I do like that, that we didn't see any swarm hosts. I would typically love to see him more with, uh, say, Tyrant Wind Mech because a lot of those units are stable. They're going to have to soak up some of the units. It's very hard uh, to A-move Mech mechanical units against a lot of the swarm hosts. So Bio, that can really work I'm around to so drop on top of them. Explosion. Yeah, this is just epic. Look at how many banners are just hanging out right behind him. Oh, the SCV! Uh, absolute carnage and GG coming out from Tyrant and that's going to be a 2-0 lead for University of Washington leading into the TV2 guys we'll be right back after a quick break but before we do remind, reminder join us in raid call group ID 1111 we're hanging out in the lounge come say hi and we'll be back with the TV2 in just a sec <laughs> 